Having come upon the first jussive in the Hebrew Bible, it's an appropriate time to talk about translating the jussive in Targum Onkelos. A great overview of the jussive in Aramaic is Anthony Aristar's article. Let's remember where Onkelos and Jonathan fall in the history of the development of the Aramaic language. Jewish literary Aramaic follows Qumran and biblical Aramaic by centuries. So it's entirely possible that there can be a diachronic change in the representation of jussives. A helpful table appears in Gazella's work, where we see that uniquely jussive forms drop the final noon from the earliest stages of Aramaic. A recent discovery is slightly different forms in the third person feminine plural and second feminine plural that are difficult to find and to prove because it has to do with vocalization rather than a difference in consonants. But in any case, Biblical Aramaic for Biblical Interpreters, page 149, has this table which shows the hallmark of the uniquely volative forms is the dropping of final noons, which we see in Jeremiah 10, 11, may they perish. Interestingly, the only third person masculine plural justive forms in the entire Hebrew Bible are in Aramaic. It didn't have to be this way, but Hebrew forms its justives differently from Aramaic, and that's just what we have in our text. Interestingly, Targum Jonathan, the same literary dialect as Onkelos, does something special for Jeremiah 10, 11 in dropping a final noon, whereas everywhere else there's a final noon, whether there's something from a meaning standpoint is justive or not in Targum Jonathan, as we see in verse 15 of the same chapter. Let's go deeper now in a second video talking about translating the justive in Targum Onkelos.